Okay, everybody close to the mic. Like, talking towards it, almost. Like this? Pretty much, yeah. I, that might ruin the angle. <laughs> Make sure when you're talking straight to me <laughs> that that is in between me and you. <laughs> yes, man. Oh. I'm going to put you in an early grave. Dre, did you go to the gym? I did. Just That's so we're clear, this whole 45-minute show and then going and having a drink and that. I know. See that. All right. Ready to do this? And action. Can I go to the bathroom real quick? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Let's get this show on the road. What do you think? Ready, Dre? I'm comfortable. I am. Ready, Thad? Ready. <laughs> ready, Bri? I'm ready. Always. Hold on. Where's Mike here? Up there. Beyonce. Wait, 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 guys. Where's my camera? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Your camera's where it always is. <laughs> right. My camera moves. All right. Ready, set, go. This is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com, and we are here with Splitting Hairs episode 38, which is crazy. I almost said 39 because I've already started editing 38 because we had Candy Shaw. Uh, I was so, like, how? I know, right? I haven't even done this yet. So I've already started that, working on this show, and this show is... We were at the Experience for Millennium Systems International, so this show is going to be themed Game On because that was the theme of that, and we are going to focus on helping people push forward and get inspired and to move. So we have Candy Shaw coming up. So let's just say, follow us on harebrain.me, Facebook, Twitter, all at Free Salon Education. Twitter is at Salon Education. Instagram, Hairstyle, Thad Bolognese, Dre Day, 2289. And, but just follow us. And make sure that you subscribe to us on YouTube. We are... Coming up with this show every Monday, so I love Mondays, and I do as well. Yes. So let's um, Millennium Systems International. We were just at the experience. We're gonna go over that. Demand Force is a, a great software program that's helping us run our business. So we're gonna talk about some things that are happening with that. Uh, Mizutani Scissors. Check those out on shopfsc.com. Standard Salon Goods. Give us these beautiful chairs to sit in. And uh, Amika gives us some prizes. We have some, we're giving away a blow dryer hopefully today if somebody's lucky enough on the wheel. And Freestyle Systems, these blow dryers that are hanging on our ceilings. You know, we bought these years ago, but we love them and they're, uh, they're helping us out with giving us another one. So um, there you go. Yeah. I don't know why I looked over there. Like, there's nothing in, I know, in but that area. But I was just like, oh, where <laughs> are they? <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, yeah, so Wednesday night. Here we go. I know another nighttime edition of the show, so we'll watch the sun set on us uh, from behind. Hopefully, Thad will be making sure that the cameras stay lit up and looking good. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's get into this. Millennium Systems International, the experience. Me and Thad just got back from Florida last night, and uh, I was I'm so psyched because it's seriously the best event for hairdressers and you don't understand why until you're there because we're so used to going to huge hair shows that are overwhelmed with people and um, it was just, it's an intimate event. There's a thousand people there but they're all focused on bettering themselves as stylists and it's, it's the only event, and I've said this before, where you go to the pool in the mid-afternoon and you don't see a hairdresser there. Like they're actually all in class, oh. which is pretty impressive. Yeah. So you're in beautiful Florida. We had uh, they had Robert Cromings there. They had, we had Candy Shaw, who's uh, this unbelievable balayage expert, which we're going to talk about her product in a little bit. Um, you watched her DVD a little bit. So um, Charles Marcus was fun to hang out with. We got an interview with him. 
Have you seen Charles Marcus speak before? He speaks in a lot of the Paul uh, Mitchell schools. I think so. I think I did a couple of years ago. Okay. Yeah, he's like this, uh, this cool guy. He's got an English accent, and he's just like, he just knows so much about the industry, and he's just fun to listen to. He's got lots of stories. So we did an interview with him coming up in a few weeks. Uh, you'll hear that as well. And then, um, but yeah, Thad, what was your favorite part about the weekend? The pool being empty. No, I'm just kidding. The pool being empty. <laughs> I'm Thad just kept actually asking me. Last year, he wanted to go to the pool like every five minutes. He was actually, I have to say, Thad this weekend was the biggest help I've ever had because he was right by my side the entire weekend, ready to film. I mean, we we did a lot. We actually, I mean, I was only hired to do two hours of work there, and I think we probably put in at least 20 Oh, yeah, hours. absolutely, yeah. hands down. Um, I would have to, I, I don't know if I could pick a favorite part um, because, I, I, you know what, I, I'd probably say getting the interviews yeah. both uh, on main stage as well as uh, out back by the beach, uh, those it, it was like absolutely amazing. Like it was, all, it was so surreal. Like making yeah. those cameras and using the uh, the jib. Well, so yeah. So the story <laughs> is, we get to the hotel room, right? And it was almost like it was meant to be because I show up in the hotel and Millennium just puts us in this beautiful hotel room. It's it's a one bedroom suite. So. Uh, which was great. So me and Thad don't have to sleep together, you know, which is nice. <laughs> so I walk in there and it's got a kitchen table that's just this big, beautiful round table. So the first thing I do, Thad's not even there yet. He didn't get there till later that night is I start setting up the mics just like this. And I, and I got the camera set up and I was like, all right, whenever we're at a party and let's say Martino's with me and I'm like, you know what, let's go up to the room. We've had a couple drinks. Let's go have some fun. Talk about hair. Right. So um, I wanted to do that. And then the night before the party, I said to Thad, I'm like, why don't we ask Millennium if we can do interviews from the big main stage? They don't use it all day. So why not, you know, talk to all these artists? They, we've all these artists here that are like world-class hairdressers. Let's sit down with them on the main stage, have the Millennium logo in the background, the lights, the everything. And uh, I, so I asked them at the party and they were like, are you kidding? Yes, of course. <laughs> so we get down there the next day. You asked them uh, after a couple of drinks and then uh, made sure you remind I only them. ask anything after a couple of drinks. I have to get a little comfortable. <laughs> oh, no, no, but I'm sorry. Ma like making sure that they had a couple of drinks so that way they answered. Oh, yeah, yeah. Obviously going to be yes. Yeah, we, we didn't go to the party till later. So they were <laughs> they were mind. willing to say yes to to whatever. But So we got to the to main stage after uh, general session and we start setting up and the AV guys come down and they're like, you know what, Let's, we're going to help you set up your cameras. So they put it, the, our camera on like this big, they call it a jib. It's like this moving mm -hmm. tripod, right? So he, he shows Thad how to zoom it in like as the show starts. So we, Thad's like running the jib. He's got, we got all these different I tripods. can't wait to see that footage because I know how Thad is with a new toy. <laughs> right. I just immediately go back to the sound effects board. Right. <laughs> so the whole interview is probably like, the no, Wayne's World I, camp. So I right away got <laughs> nervous about this, right? Because I know too. So I said to Thad, I'm like, just make sure, like, zoom it up and leave it there. Because <laughs> what happens is, I mean, our, these cameras don't autofocus. So right. you can't zoom it up, come in, at our faces. Like, who knows what would have ended up happening. <laughs> right. that, but Thad loves it. I think we need to well, get a jib. I'm trying to figure out where it would fit in the salon. What? But... <laughs> I think it'd be better off doing like an overhead jib. Yeah. Like, yeah. We'll yeah. put the track up there. Yeah. yeah. But, It'll just uh, run from the ceiling. Despite what you guys both thought, I was actually planning on just like doing like, like what, what we did because I was terrified that I was going to end up breaking it or breaking the camera because I'm like, this yeah. thing looks expensive and on, like, like very spontaneous. Like, I just want to get it to like the spot where it's going to like just like hang out and stay there. Yeah. So anyway, so you guys don't care that much about filming, but it was really fun. The show is really cool. I was editing our interview with Candy Shaw last night. She's going to be our special guest on the show today. She came up with the Bali Box, all these balayage products. Three weeks ago, we were just saying, nobody has cool balayage products. Right. Well, guess what? They do. Now they do. So, and of course, the experience would have already found that person. Right. So she was there. She was teaching balayage classes, and there was everybody was talking about how great her classes were. So I wanted to connect with her, and we sat down. She's such a nice person, and she just has fun. She talks. We talk about French haircutting on the uh, on the interview. We talk about all kinds of different stuff. So, um, and also her father. I think she said fifty seven years he's been cutting hair, and he's still doing it. Like nice. four days a month or something. So, Good so for him. 
Uh, Brian is going to play with this because he's our balayage guy. He's going to he's gonna have some fun with it. We're going to create videos with it. Um, I've been talking to Candy. I'm hoping sometime we'll have this on the shop. But make sure, you know, at the end of the interview, you'll hear where to get it. But I believe it's at um, – we'll have to check. If there's got to be a website on there somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure. But on the interview, now we it's on say the prize wheel. Yeah, and click below. There's a link. So if you want to purchase it, this is only a $99 kit, but we'll we'll talk about it. We'll unbox it. In a hey, Matt, that was uh, the the show price. I think it's uh, 119. Or 119. One. Okay. Well, it's worth every every dollar. Yeah. So, all right. Um, do you want to get into this? Let's do this special note thing first. Okay. Okay. Well, you want me to read it? Yeah. All right. I like when you read things. Can you put on your announcer voice, though, please? No, yes. do it in the carpet. I don't voice. have an announcer voice. This is yeah, it. Do it in the <laughs> this is the only one, one I have. <laughs> well, there's that in my Matt Beck Cartman voice. Okay. Well, we don't have to do that one. We'll skip that one. All right. Thanks. All right. Hi, Matt Beck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Special note. It says, hi, Matt Beck and company. Have been studying your videos slash education since March 1st. Have been in the business 25 years and have struggled behind the chair not knowing what I was missing. Something. A couple weeks ago, I was sitting with a mannequin head instead of my knitting hobby, and it hit me. The breakthrough. Head shape and not elevating as it rounds. Has changed everything, and it came to me in that moment. Have been cleaning up all my haircuts. Have had a steady increase of clients, and my income has risen. And felt confident enough to raise my prices recently. I finally feel that my skill slash confidence is matching the years behind the chair, and I'm just getting started. Thank you for such a great tool. Vicki Taylor. So this, I got this message from Vicki Taylor. I don't remember if it was through, I think it was through an email. And it was actually, yes, it was from an email that was sent to her back in like March or something. And so when I read this, this is just, it's just the icing on the cake of everything that we do. I mean, mm-hmm. this is that moment when it finally clicks for you and you really understand what you're doing. And that's what we keep pushing for everyone out there to just keep following the videos. One of the videos will finally click for you and you'll have that moment where you just, and it just keeps happening. I mean, I, I, every time I'm sitting down with somebody, I mean, I sat down with Robert Cromines and, um, I was ta- we were talking about something about the wash house and how he came up with that. And it was like, you know, little things, you just learn little things and they click with you as you go. And, and p- the way people think, the way people do haircutting, just everything. So it's really cool that she's found this as a tool and it works. And, you know, I just love getting these messages because it, it's very gratifying to know that what we're doing is helping people. Yeah. So. And I want to say I, I am with her because that's one of the more recent Eurekas I've had. Yeah. With the haircutting is thinking about, I don't remember what, whether I was watching you film something or if it was when I went back and just randomly watched something, but it, uh, the same thing, just looking at elevation from where the hair is coming from and right. not just where you're holding it. Yeah. Cause everybody explains haircutting from exactly where you're holding the hair out from the head, but not thinking of the curvature and how it's, how it's moving away. So just thinking about it that way, I think it's awesome that that finally clicked for her. It was something that. I, under, I got to understand shape from a, a class that I took, but I... <laughs> Brian's yawning. I'm good. So, good. <laughs> you want me to move on? I'm just kidding. So we had... Uh, so I understood that, and then all of a sudden, as I started thinking about it more and more, then I, then I realized that, well, if I'm always holding the hair, let's say I, I create this line here, but if I'm holding the hair at all these different points, the head is, is moved. So as the head curves and I'm holding the hair in this line, that line is a, a ton of different angles through it. I have this haircut that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put out. I want to see Kelly Osborne just cut a mohawk in her hair. Yeah, she did. Mm-hmm. She shaved her head, but I want to create a really cool one. Um, from an inspiration that I had from a, a Paul Mitchell VHS tape that I watched a long time ago, <laughs> but then also from the head shape thought process. So I got this really cool haircut I'm planning on putting putting on video and it's going to be a haircut that takes more time to set up than to actually cut it. It'll probably take a couple minutes to cut it, but it'll take probably 10 minutes to set it up. So it's going to be cool. Anyways, I thought about it today. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. All right. So did you want to recap the experience anymore? I think we already recapped that. I jumped. I jumped. Hey, it's how you roll. Um, I just want to say I was telling Thad earlier, my favorite hashtag from the weekend was speak 
TME, which I knew was the Millennium Experience. But every time I saw it, I kept reading it as Speak to Me. <laughs> and I was like, why? Would it probably took like three or four times of seeing it before I realized yeah. I was like, oh, the, oh all right. All oh, right. yeah. The Millennium Experience. Yeah. So I never thought about that, though. That's I was like, it was, cool. a, it was probably Speak to completely me. accident, but it reads well. They had at the experience, <laughs> this is one thing that we didn't recap. They had this, uh, what was it called? Live Cube, I believe. Yeah. Live Cube was the, the company that they used, but it was this website. And you, they base it on a conference. So everything at the conference was interactive. So basically, you log in with your Twitter account. And everybody, the more you share, the more you tweet, the more you put things out there, the more you repost things and, and all of that, the more points you get. Oh, geez. And then at the end of the conference, everybody was getting points. Um, and they got prizes for the points. So the, the That's leader. Awesome. So, and it would show it. During the conference. Oh, I'd kill it. Oh, it was crazy. It's a game. Like while they're on main stage, in the background are these screens that are showing the, the stats and everybody's posts. So people are posting things during oh, while yeah. everyone's talking and Hashtag pictures. Bobby and Mac. So and that uh Bob McConey is uh John Harms basically they John Harms started the company and then very quickly after that Bob McConey started. He was like the big sales guy and I've I've done an interview with them in the past. They had this game with him all weekend, hashtag where's Bobby Mac. And so he was just randomly being like photographed throughout the entire event <laughs> without him knowing and people would hashtag it. So he couldn't even relax all weekend. Poor guy. I know. I so felt badly for him because apparently somebody even got him in the bathroom. <laughs> right. It was That's you. Awkward. Yeah, no, it was it, probably it that. Me. It would totally be <laughs> you that would take awkward. it that far. No, 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 no. I, I, I do have boundaries. Yeah. So Unlike you. You cross the line everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. You can't even you can't even deny that. Alrighty then. Oh so <laughs> the look of shock on your face after he said that, it was like <laughs> you went through every emotion. We'll wow. move on. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So tools, tools of, of the week. week. Tools of the week. What else is there? This is it. This is the one we're going this over. This is the most important one. All right. So it's funny, Matt was talking to me about, you know, we, he met this woman and he like never dropped a name, which didn't really matter because I'm terrible at putting names with faces, especially with people that I haven't met. And um, so he's talking about her and just how nice she was and how great she was. And she got this really cool box and she's got all this awesome stuff in it. And in this box is a DVD and we pop it on. And as soon as we pop it on, I'm like, oh, I know who she is because I don't know. I mean, if. I'm sure on one of these episodes I've told the story, but the whole reason that I did that balayage video was because I wanted to know how to do it. So I went on YouTube to try to find something myself and never really found a full how-to video. Right. But I found this woman, like, everywhere. When you looked it up, like, she was on all these different news channels and all this stuff, just doing, like, segments for morning shows and whatnot, showing what it is, talking about it. And so now I guess it makes sense that that's why she was out there promoting it, but not doing the how-to videos because right. she was probably in the process of filming it for this. Well, most companies are doing a, some sort of DVD, um, and that's why I like having free salon education because it was something different. It was right. ed education that was accessible to hairdressers, but there is a time and place for DVD education, oh, yeah. and and it's cool when it comes with a product. So um, you. Took this out. You checked it out. We're going to unbox it on the interview. But key things in this box. So Wait, definitely you want to watch the interview. Oh, you're going to sure. unbox it in the she interview un with We her. unbox it with her. So We're she got to go. That would be silly because we already see it and unbox it with her. So tell me. I, that's why I wanted you to take it out earlier and look at it. Oh, okay. Um, so just tell me, because you're a color guy, your thoughts on it. And then they have to stay tuned and watch Candy Shaw because then um, she'll get, they'll get to see what's in it. I'm looking forward to it, especially after watching the DVD. I saw it's honestly, I, I even said to the Bolins while you were gone, I was like, I'm watching the DVD. I was like, I hope she doesn't, like, I hope she sees how old our video is so she doesn't think that I ripped her off. <laughs> right. <laughs> because our techniques are very similar. Like, I realize they're very similar because we're both doing what we're doing from an aspect of understanding hair. Right. And understanding color and understanding how it's going to flow and all that stuff. So it would lead you to understand that that's why they're just similar ideas. But 
I love what she's got. I love what she's using. I have not tried the lightener yet. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it because like, she was very specific about how to mix it and the consistency. And it's funny, she describes it the same way that I do, but she said just toothpaste. I always said wet toothpaste. Was, okay. So you guys um, are like twins. Pretty much. It's And yeah. the bangs. Right. They really do look quite similar. Um, I, I was telling Thad, I think the one thing that excites me the most is... I am completely clumsy and inept at saran wrap. Just ever. I can't right. do it ever. I've never been able to. It takes me five feet of saran wrap to wrap a bagel. Like, I just can't do it. <laughs> yeah. And I was actually really excited when I opened her box and saw that not only does she have some in there, but it's uh, perforated. So it's gonna. it looks like something that I'll be able to tear just one-handed while I'm holding something else or doing something else because... That was always my issue. Is like, at what point do I have two free hands or the time to do that? And it looks like, you know, she came up with a way to alleviate that problem. So that is something I'm looking forward to. Yeah, to giving a go. And the uh, so in the box there is the DVD which, which you started watching. I did. It's and, very clear. And what I think is cool in, in our in our relationship with Candy is now. You guys have similar balayage techniques, which is great. It speaks well to people. So now you can try out her lightener. We'll create videos with it. We'll do balayage videos and more ombre videos and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one thing that she says that, you know, I, I think we've talked about as well, that balayage is a technique and that ombre is a look. So, right. you know, so she goes over all of that in our interview and stuff. So um, in the box, the DVD, the saran wrap, you get... The the pal the palette, uh, palette and the, the brush, clips clips, I think lightener that's, DVD saran wrap yeah so for one hundred nineteen dollars it's awesome and then you after you have that all then you can buy everything individually so right um you know so quality of the tools is there we have not used the lightener yet um, but we're excited and it's created only for balayage and you'll hear why that is in our interview. So let's go to feedback from last week. After that, we'll, we'll go to her interview and then we'll come back with social media and beer pong, free pong and all of that stuff. All right. <laughs> you know, if we do this at night, we could put beer in there. We could, but Same. we're professionals. <laughs> yeah, we are. All right. <laughs> feedback from last week. We'll start with Michael Taylor, our buddy. Uh, we were talking about uh, new stylists, the non-compete contracts, all that stuff. And he said, my advice to all young stylists, never ever sign a contract, no matter how badly you may need a job. The contract is presented to you, walk away. Salon across the street from me is one in a small local chain. The owner recruits straight from beauty school and has all employees sign a contract, restricting them from working within a seven mile radius for one year after. That stinks. I mean, that's... That's totally taking advantage of new people. Uh, I, ha I have to touch on this because we had... Um, Both of you just made the same face. I'm like nervous. Well, no, that? because I, uh, we, I, this is the first salon I ever worked at in Maryland had to sign a contract. But the fact of the matter is one of the girls got a lawyer to look at it over before she signed it. And you cannot physically prevent somebody from working. So if it actually goes to court... It would never hold up in a court of law. Well, I've heard of yeses and nos. Yeah, me too. Like one of my one of my yeses, yeah, they could get a job within a so many mile radius, but they were agreeing to like a hundred dollars a day for every day within that first year that they worked there, and it yeah. held yeah, up. That, that, that yeah, and you signed you signed an agreement saying it I depends will pay on you. how you sign the agreement. Oh, okay. I mean, you look at if if I write, hey Thad, I I type up a letter real quick right here. And then you sign it, and then I I sign it, or I just put it away in a folder, which is what happened to to me when I first started working at a salon. That's not going to hold up. I mean, yeah, that's you versus notarized. me, right? right? So, but if you get something notarized that says you will not work within a certain amount of uh, a certain radius of the salon, it will hold up. You may have to pay quite a bit of money, but it will if it's notarized, because that is a it's an official agreement. I mean, you can't agree to something and then have now, I'm sure the wording has to be in there. If you're going to do a non-compete agreement, you need to get a lawyer to write it. Um, you can't just be a salon owner sitting at a computer and 
I, you right. cannot work seven miles from my salon. That's right. not how it works. So it, it, you can't Google non-compete <laughs> agreement, right. put your logo on it, print it out, and have somebody sign it. Right. I, I would say it also probably has to do with the state because there's different state laws. So what holds up in, say, like New Jersey might not hold up in Maryland or in Pennsylvania. But I know that um, a lot of the times, like, you can't sign away certain things like um, uh, negligence. Like, that, that, that's, like, one of the things you can't sign away. Your right to work, like, is it, uh, there's different clauses. Like, you can't, like, go into the, like, if you quit, you can't go into the computer or you can't take stuff from that business to your new job. Right. If you came to work at a salon and you already knew how to cut hair and you went to work at a different salon, you brought that with you. If you have client cards and you quit or get fired and you take those client cards and go work down the street, that doesn't hold up. So it's all circumstance. It's all depend on state law. Yeah. You know? and, and Since everything is different, I think basically what everyone seems to be in agreement on is just don't do it. Don't do it because there's no point in having somebody work for you that doesn't want to work for you. Right. The, so who cares? I don't keep people if they don't want to be with you. Let them go with the clients and everything. And if, and if everyone wants to leave you, then you're doing something wrong. That's it. You That's know, the fact. The, who cares about the paper? Put it in the paper shredder and get rid of it. Start taking care of your staff so they don't all want to leave you. If it's just one person, it doesn't affect your business. I mean, I, I've let people go that were my number one person because they didn't want the same, they didn't have the same business ideas that I had. And it just, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out and you're not going to please everyone. I don't want people working for me that don't want to work for me. So fair enough. Thank you, Michael Taylor. He's a salon owner. I think it's cool that he says to never do it, but whether it holds up in court or not, doesn't matter. There you go. Uh, let's see. Let's get Morgan Johnson really loves the idea of I Love Mondays shirt. So there's another vote for the I Love Mondays. I know. I got to make this before any other company makes it. Yeah. <laughs> I actually made sure that I put in a phone call today. So Just so you guys know, though, the I Love Mondays shirt is coming, hopefully within the next two weeks. So Morgan Johnson, keep an eye out. Yeah. You can wear it when you work on Mondays with your boss. That's what the rest of that comment was. Man, you should probably just put it up on the site so that you have it Wait, already. She on. works on Mondays. Yeah, she said she loves Mondays, even though because she works on her, she works and it's just her and her boss, and it's super peaceful and quiet. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. See, that's the that's the awesome thing about hairdressers is, even if they work, it's still a good day. Like we get to do something that we love doing. That's why we. I never feel like I'm coming to work, whether I'm, you know, I, I'm excited for every day of my life. Like, I'm excited to have days off. That's a really great thing to be able to say. Right? Yeah. I'm excited to have days off with my family. I love it more than anything. And then I get to come to work, and I actually love being at work. How excited were you to see me after so many days of not being able to? I know. (laughs) (laughs) He's speechless. Yeah, I was so excited to come back. I actually, I, I was really excited after I spoke with Candy Shaw. I was really excited to bring this back to you. I knew well, you would really like this. I thank know you, Candy, everybody in our salon now is thing. very like everyone loves balayage now. So I was excited to bring this back and and share it with everyone. All, All right. right. Um, let's see real quick. Anthony Barnhill tells a really funny story because we were talking about. I like that this week we have the pictures of them on here. I know. Good job. Like I'm, I can see Morgan's face, Anthony's Anthony, face. Anthony, I can see your mustache. Yes. <laughs> um, we were talking about falling asleep last week. Yeah. Me falling asleep. Right. Constantly. Same this week. I'm good. Brian took NyQuil last night to go to sleep. He's like Lil Wayne. <laughs> Isn't that what he takes? Sizzrup. <laughs> I'm, I'm like him in many ways, really. The, <laughs> really. the NyQuil is just what the icing on the cake. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, so anyways. Anthony tells a story of a woman that just left the dentist and came in for a color. She was fine until they started to blow dry her, and her eyes rolled back into the back of her head, and I thought she was going to throw up. So I grabbed a trash can, and she slumped back into the chair and passed out. I thought she was dead. I shook her a little on her <laughs> shoulders and said her name, and someone was about to call 911, and boom, she wakes up and says, oops, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly back to normal. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love it. I love it. Like some of the, those are like those experiences that first off, you never forget them, but they're just like, y- because you're in the service business, it's just all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I cannot believe that just happened. <laughs> but it, then it's like, and then you just go and it's, how was your day today? Thought a woman died, <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't. That's why I love Mondays. That's a good thing. All right. 
Uh, Britt Von Strange also would love and I love Monday's shirt because it is so much better to go out on Sunday or Monday. Yes. Uh, Kimberly Benack. Benick. Uh, thank you for showing the blow dryers. Also, Matt, thank you for educating me about the shears. I never knew that wherever the blade gets fattest is where the power in the blade is. Also, the difference of the dry cut blade is awesome. One more question. How the heck do any of the viewers get that once in a lifetime chance to spin the wheel? I'm jealous at BTW. I sat through the entire show. Is, is Kimberly spinning the wheel? Who'd we pick? Did we pick someone? Yeah, I Don't some. say it yet. Yeah, I have some, but it's not Kimberly. How did you pick them? How did I pick them? Yeah. At random? At random? Can yeah. we pick Kimberly? Sure. I may make it a, an executive decision right now. She did sit through the entire episode. Yeah. Yeah. Can we pick her? Yeah, she's picked. We can still do for the other thing. We'll do the other thing. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. For yeah. free pong, but yeah, let's do. Let's have Kimberly do so it. So there you go, Kimberly. Well, squeaky for, wheel gets the oil. That's for, how you get to spin the wheel. For the record, though, how do you uh, get, like? How would you get your name put into the running for uh, the other viewers? for spinning the wheel? Exactly. Oh, there's so a post on Facebook. Yeah, so I post on Facebook every week, and I say who wants to spin the free wheel, and you like it or share it or comment about it. Okay, so, so I would want to check into Facebook earlier in the week uh, to. Keep an eye on Yeah, our, and a lot of people page. post it, and, and actually people probably post this on Facebook, the same kind of wording, but I'm just feeling like Kimberly needs to speak. That is cute. And um, So if we do this on Wednesdays now, that post will probably go up Tuesdays? Mondays or Tuesdays, usually 24 hours before is okay. my... Tr- my so it hope. could be Tuesday or Thursday or whatever day we decide. You just better be checking yeah, our just Facebook check all it, the time. Yeah, just check, check our Facebook. Facebook. Set up so you get notifications when Follow us post. on Facebook at Free Salon Education, all one word. Check right. our Facebook once every hour. Every yes. Day. yes. There's lots of things happening. And Michelle, Facebook. there's what? There's always things happening on Facebook. I thought you said there was a possum outside. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, there's no well, possum. What? <laughs> well, I would be willing to bet that there is a possum outside <laughs> somewhere. Lots of them. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, wait. So, wait, you skipped Michelle, but I do want to say, because she said, P.S., you guys uh, should make black tank tops for girls to wear in the salon. We have, I made black tank tops for you guys. They have a pink logo on them, um, and I got to pick them up probably tomorrow, I'm well, guessing. Well, well, and hats. I got uh, trucker hats. Wait, can I just tops. say that I think it's funny? You made tank tops, but tank tops are against your own dress code in your salon. You can put a sweater over top of it. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't. I didn't make them for here. Yeah, he, he, he didn't make guys ones. I made them so that everyone else could break the rules for themselves. Nice. So that's so Michelle. That's coming. He's gonna as put well. She's got see, another. See who shows up for an interview with that on. All right, where are we at? Let's. Get, so uh, that's good, I think, for feedback from last week, right? Well, actually, I think that was it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, business tips now. Okay. All right, and we don't have business tips this week because we're gonna go to Candy Shaw. And I feel like that's probably, you know, good. So check out, this is the interview with Candy Shaw at The Experience. You're going to watch that, jib it up, and, uh, yeah, and then are. we will be right back. But you're going to learn all about the Bali Box and, and candy and everything. And I hope you guys enjoy this. So check it out. Hey, guys, this is Matt Beck from FreeSalonEducation.com here with Candy Shaw. We had a little bit of a uh, sound issue, but we're good. We're, we're on here. It. And I'm excited to talk to you. We're at the Millennium Experience in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, in this huge room with this huge stage. Thank you, Millennium, for letting us use this. And uh, I want to talk to Candy Shaw about the Bali Box, right? Wonderful. Which I'm very excited about because I actually just said on our podcast two, probably two weeks ago that no one does anything for Balayage. There's no tools. There's nothing. Oh, my goodness. I had no idea. And so, then you found me. Exactly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I'm very excited to chat with you about this product. So, But what I want to do is, is first off, just talk about how you, uh, what you're passionate about in the industry, and then we'll go from there. So tell me what your, your big thing is. What, what When you get up in the morning, what excites you about the hair industry? Oh, gosh. What excites me about the hair industry is simply waking up and knowing that there's a student out there that wants direction. And to me, he who trains best wins, you know, and I've always just felt like the philosophy. My father is a 55 year hairdresser. And everything I've ever known is about learning and uh, teaching. And I just don't think if you're not paying it forward in this industry, um, you're really ever going to be uh, uh, be fulfilled. Right. And so I'm so excited about what you're doing, Matt. This is just really Thank new to you. me, too. Yeah. And I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me. It's funny trying to explain. I'm sure you know this with the, having your product and you've just been in the industry for a long time. Explaining to people when you're trying to do something different, um, 
like a podcast in the middle of a stage in a random place. The great thing about Millennium is they get it, but just getting people to understand that something's different or that you just want to give to hairdressers something. So, and you said that your father is still doing hair to this day. Yeah, he's uh, behind the chair four days a month. That's crazy. And it's really crazy. I, I, he's like a rock star to me. He yeah. was a competition hairdresser back in the day. He was one of the first Americans to win um, the competition hair which is, uh, which is so cool about hairdressing back then. It was like those competitions were true, uh, probably unsponsored driven, just totally passionate all about people the, the craft. Do it, doing their craft. That's exactly. cool. So you got your inspiration from him, obviously. Yes. I never went to beauty school, actually. You In didn't? Georgia, you don't have to go to beauty school. You can actually apprentice. Okay. And all I right. spent a lot of time in Europe and I was very inspired by um, French hairdressing and uh, French cutting and French balayage and uh, so I opened an academy okay. and I just began this journey of giving back and paying it forward. And it's been really fulfilling and amazing. That's awesome. So tell me about um, a question I asked you earlier about what French haircutting is and coloring. What, what well, is that? It's, it's definitely different from your sort of pivot point approach. Right. Um, in the sense that we cut everything on top of the hand. We don't cut anything um, palm to palm. Okay. So French cutting is, um, you build like a shingle on a roof. So the layers start from the top and work down and okay. fall perfectly. Um, and it's, I would say, more commercial if you would really put it in a category because yeah. it's not real architectural looking uh, in the sense that it's just, uh, you know, following the shape of a woman's head, her bone structure, her lifestyle, and putting all those things together I like to that. get the perfect French haircut. So, like, let's say you were going to start on the top of the head and you're working through. When you work into, let's say, a graduated shape, mm -hmm. then... So you're, it's just shifting your hand, but you're still cutting on top of your hand. Correct. So okay. the body position is really different and yeah. how you actually move around I feel like I head. would have to put my feet on the ceiling. Well, no. It, it, not, I need to learn don't. this. But it's, it's very interesting in how you do it. If you think about like a protractor that yeah. has the pencil that goes around or the compass that goes around. Right. You sort of travel around the head the whole time you're cutting. Okay. So you start on the right, finish on the left, or if you're left-handed, yeah. you go the opposite direction. But basically, you learn to layer hair um, with the shape of the head. Okay. So it's, it, it's, it's that's easy. It's very cool. And it's uh, efficient. Yeah. And I, that's what I love about haircutting in general. And we're going to talk about color, obviously. Yeah. But what I love about just haircutting in general is there's so many um, different avenues, ways to get to the end result. You know, so it's cool. I've never heard of anybody that has, does French haircutting before. Well, it was kind of created in France by a, a legend uh, who's passed away named Bruno Patini. Okay. And um, of course, if you go to Paris and you see Jacques de Sange or Jean-Louis de Ville or Alexandre du Paris, they're, they're, all, they're all French hairdressers. And they're, you know, in America, uh, a lot of that sort of came to life with yeah. Margaret Fakai and, you know, uh, uh, people in the industry that sort of brought that soft layering to life. Right. And so what I did as a student is I just became the perpetual student that realized I needed to Americanize the French way because you can't understand the accents. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, nonetheless, uh, I took it and just uh, felt like a way of training for my salon was a wonderful way because in Georgia, you don't have to go to beauty school. And I never went to beauty school. So I had to learn by just simply watching. Right. Okay. All right. So let's get into balayage. So tell me about that. Why are you so passionate about what, what, what is balayage to you and why are you so passionate about it? Well, the word balayage means sweep. Right. And so for me, it was about painting and hair. And I really loved how you could paint energy to haircuts. Okay. And you could actually customize like color. That wording. That's good. You know, I actually felt like, uh, I always say paint your way to financial freedom too, because <laughs> right. it's a lot faster. Yes. But nonetheless, um, to me, it was about looking at a shape and finding the perfect design for the shape through color. Okay. And so I've been painting hair for 20 years and actually people have thought, you know, in the, the back in the day that I was had lost my mind. Right. Yeah. That you were cheating or something. Yeah. yeah. And 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 why aren't you using foil? I mean, are you ridiculous? What's wrong with you, Candy? You know. But but to me, it was the freedom of being an art artist and really knowing um, that I could put my mark on everything I did. Yeah. I wasn't just following a pattern. I was following a head shape, and I was following the 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 essence of a woman. Well, to me, foiling foiling never made sense to me because nothing 
goes into a panel into your head. So right. um, even a weave foil just doesn't look, the placement of it is not natural. So exactly. being able to paint, I get that there are situations right. where you need foil to incubate right. the color or whatever, right. but but it's just not natural. So we, we do a lot of balayage at the salon, but it's something that I think commercially is very popular at this point. I mean, we have people, we've never, we never had people before requesting balayage. Yes. Now it's like every other phone call is. Yes. Well, it's, you know, I, I do have to identify one thing though, just to your, to your subscribers Yeah. in that, you know, a lot of people think balayage is ombre, you know, and I right. said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, ombre is a look. Right. Balayage is a technique. Exactly. And so you really need to let your subscribers know that when people do call, you know, you have all the capabilities of doing everything with color that you could do with a foil with a balayage, right. but a lot quicker and more efficiently. Yeah. And, you know, time is money. And yep. behind the chair, people are, you know, there's only so many ways to get more revenue when you become a master stylist. And right. so balayage sort of allows you that purpose. And, um, I say, though, that the ombre is like the little black dress. It's not going away. Right, so yeah. people need to kind of wrap themselves around that. You yeah. Know, you can do different things with balayage um, to create different looks and to make it uniquely different. But right. But let's don't all pigeonhole balayage into only being on the ends of the hair. Exactly. And I think that um, we had we had a video that we created. We have a guy, Brian, who does mm -hmm. uh, some color videos with us, and he... He has a balayage video and then he has a uh, balayage in, like, uh, inspired ombre video or something. Yeah. But that people are watching it. 700,000 views in, I think, eight months. It's like it's amazing that because people are looking for it. Clients right. are looking for it. I, right. Those are not hairdressers no. watching. Those are people. I mean, there's some of them, hopefully yes. most of them. But um, people want to see it. They want to mm -hmm. learn it. Right. So. All right. So talking about balayage, let's. Get into this box because I've been waiting. I said to you, I don't even want to see what's in it until we're on here. So I love that. Let's too. Uh, let's figure this out. You, okay. you know how to open so it. You know what's in it. Toolkit for the balayage artist. Right? Yes. So I made this as a niche simply because people need it. Right. So I kind of think it's a little candy in the Look box. Look at that. It's a little class. Okay. In the box. Let's show this off. Wow. Right. Woo woo. Yeah. So this is very All exciting. The you need. Very quality done. Hashtag quality is our big thing. So Love we it. only really bring on anything that has is a quality type product, right? Love so this it. is, so we have, All the things let's you go need. through it. Okay, what do we need? so let me start with my very first favorite thing. And I think any artist has to have the perfect paintbrush. Yes. And what I love about the brush is it's already got a uh, tail comb on it. So uh -huh. you, you can work quick. Uh, the actual br bristles are designed to be sort of long and firm so that you can brush with your stroke. Right. You know, a lot of times people try to balayage from the top of the brush, and I like to paint from the side. So you hold it like a pencil, and I love the fact that it's very efficient and wonderful. So that's the brush. That's awesome. That I use, that I love. And every great artist has to have a wonderful palette. I love how it's thicker. It's Thank like a pencil. It yeah, is like a pencil. Like a pencil. Exactly. So, of course, everybody needs clips to clip off the hair. I always say... Four clips to uh, paint your way to financial freedom. There you go. That's all you need. But the artist palette, you know, to hold the paint on on to the reservoir on the palette. So, of course, the brush and the palette are in harmony. Yeah. And in succession, you know, they always work together. And I always paint from the outside of the of the paddle um, directly across. And, again, this is a body position type of thing because a lot of times people think a palette is a foil board. Okay. But it's not. Right. You don't stick it up into the hair and paint down like you do on foil. You paint side to side and the body moves like this. Okay. So it's very interesting. Very interesting. And I like the palette because it's wide and, you know, most girls have long hair. So yeah. So you can put lots of hair. That was my big thing. It was, there was a, I've seen maybe one other one that's a little bit wider than normal because right. normally they're like a stick. Yeah. It's like smaller. trying to, a balancing act, trying to get the Correct. hair down. Just it. like the balancing beam in gymnastics, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. So this, um, but let me see this because I, I love that it has a texture to it yeah um the other ones are just like a piece of just just a regular piece of plastic which right. is all it needs to be but i love that you've put these details into well, it well thank you and it really does um help you work more efficiently and cleaner yeah. and of course if you're doing highlights and lowlights you need two paddles and two brushes you okay. know or if you're doing multicolor you have pinks, purples, whatever it is that you're painting in the hair, you know, you, you obviously And can you get these separately? Yes, like you absolutely. could just order this if you absolutely. want? All right. Yes, All right. at sunlightsbalayage.com. Perfect. All right. So then my lightener, and you'll have to excuse me for having to 
pull out and, and stress because I have a That's little fine. Bit Let's of, get it there. Uh, elbow issue today. The guy uh, last night at the carnival picked me up from the stilts and <laughs> pulled my <laughs> pulled my elbow out of socket. But nice. nonetheless, um, this is Sunlight's professional balayage lightener. Okay. It's a lightener I created. It took a long time to put this together. Yeah. And basically, the vast difference in it, because everybody wants to know, it is, has kaolin in it, which is clay. So clay makes balayage go on very smooth and creamy. Okay. So it doesn't flake and become a snowstorm at the end of your balayage painting. Yeah. And this has the ability to lift six levels. So that's incredible for people who don't use a heat source. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're so used to putting everything under the dryer. This allows you to work quick uh, and efficient. And at the end of the day, you don't always have to add heat. Okay. Which is what I love. Yeah. Most uh, lighteners are silica based. So it's, a, it's different. You know, when you put something under the dryer and it's encapsulated in a foil, it needs to react differently. Right. So this is definitely not something to foil hair with. It's only to paint hair with. Okay. So it's a different thing. And it's called sunlights because I love you're that trying it has, to mimic the it, sun. Yeah. It's for that purpose and that's what i like i like the because it not everything is a one size fits all kind of deal absolutely so you know i equivocate it to like buying a set of golf clubs so you buy a set of golf clubs you go back to the store and you get your one hero club yeah you get your favorite uh your seven iron yes exactly or your pitching wedge or whatever and so to me this is a hero product that goes uh in tandem with what you're currently using in your color line okay. in your salon. So it's not like, oh, i got to get rid of something. I'm just adding a hero performing product right. that you can mix with your 40 volume cream of whatever color line you oh, use. Oh, you can use whatever developer. Yeah. So oh, I love that. So you can that. use your 20, 30, 40, so it doesn't, you know, if you're a Wella salon, I'm a Wella salon, or you're a L'Oreal, whatever it is that you use right. uh, in your current salon, you could mix with sunlight. That's very cool. Yeah. And you said it lifts six levels. Yes, exactly. Right. Obviously with 40 volume, 30 volume, it can go three to four and 20, two to three. And obviously okay. we have the education. The education. I mean, that's what I'm Which all about. Which is the most important part of this box. It is. Take a class home with you. I mean, you can yeah. take this too. This could be really great for... Um, this can be really great for even the independent contractor that's out there that can't afford to bring in classes to where they are. Or the salon owner who just wants to... Uh, show his uh, staff or her staff, you know, something new and something different. Yeah. Um, so I always take everything back to the basics. You yeah. know, my daddy always taught me kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Yep. You know, because sometimes we try to elaborate on too many things. And really the truth is, it's just a simple five tools that you need to be a balayage artist. Perfect. So the, the DVD shows you five ways to uh, paint hair. Okay. I have five different types of techniques that I use when painting hair. And it also tells you how to mix it and how to do it okay. um, and all that. And then the final thing is... Oh, yeah. What is that? This is the wrap. Help Let's here. pull it together. And there's three different sizes of wrap. This is a short size, and it's all perforated. Okay. So I just go to the Bed Bath & Beyond and get a paper towel holder okay and i put my perforated wrap on there and i just pull it to where i need it and i just it seamlessly um comes off obviously short hair you use a shorter you right. can tear these longer and lay them longer and then we have medium and long that's so cool so you have like everything it. you need and of course can order you know different things based on what type of hair you paint in your region Okay. Obviously, closer to the equator, right. we have a lot more blonde hair and a lot longer hair. And then, you know, when you travel up north, there's a lot of darker hair and, and, and sometimes a lot shorter hair, it seems. Right. So for me, um, I give you all three sizes of perforated wrap so that you can do that. Perfect. So anything else? Anything else in this box? No, nothing but nothing but an opportunity. You have <laughs> there you go. I love it. <laughs> so you have packed this full with everything that you need for balayage. I love that. And you guys know that I don't bring anything on here unless it's, you know, a quality product done exactly for hairdressers. Exactly. You know, nothing else. So I am absolutely buying one of these, by the way. And I will do a review coming up on our channel. So um oh I'm sure Brian will. I won't. I I'm not a I'm not a hair colorer, but um, anything else? No, I just want to say that, um, you know, balayage did definitely kind of get uh, a lot of people uh, a bad rap simply because people got frustrated with it. And so I just tried to simplify things and really teach people that, 
you can do this. And whatever you set your mind to, obviously, right. yeah. you can do it. And um, I just hope that people will take a leap of faith because yeah. to me it is a revolution, sort of like the, the cap. Right. Back in the day is now gone, and the foil, uh, you know, eventually will also dissipate because people do realize that painting hair is is quick, it's yeah. fun, it's exciting, and it's more and natural. The are beautiful, right? And this, um, so they can pick this up where? Well, sunlightspoliage dot com. Okay, is um, the sunlight website? Okay, uh, Jameson Shaw. Uh, hairdressers is my salon in Atlanta where okay. I have my academy and I also teach classes. Also go on location and teach uh, in people's uh, uh, salons or f in a forum such as this. Okay. Um, you know, for uh, for people as well. Well, I've heard great things about your classes at the experience. Thank so, you. and you have one today? Yes, I do. At one o'clock, right? I so do. you got to get there. So we'll, um, so pick up the balayage box. And we'll, uh, how much does this guy run? It's $99. Oh, that's uh, awesome. It's, uh, it, it, I honestly thought it was going to be 300 Yeah. You're, because of the education in it. And I mean, it's a starter kit. So I really thought it was going to be, a, everybody okay. stacks on a huge intro in right. price. $99 is well, awesome. Well, I will say that to me, it's like buying the printer. You yeah. know, this is just the cartridge you're yeah. going to need later. <laughs> right, yeah. But for, you exactly. know, at the show, it's 99. It's normally 119 online. Online. Okay. You know? All right. Um, but like the brushes are $4. The paddles are oh, $8. It's, awesome. it's, such it's a, a good... no brainer. Yeah. I always say for a hundred dollars, this has 34 applications in it. Okay. That's, if you charge a hundred dollars for a highlight, that's the $3,400 return oh, right. on your yeah. investment. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, so it's a no brainer. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much. It was thank very nice so talking to you, me. meeting you. We got a lot of great information. So you guys make sure you check out sunlights, balayage dot com. pick this up and we will see you guys on the next video. Thanks. Thank you. All right, guys, we're back. <laughs> That's so weird. I know. We're back with Splitting Hairs, <laughs> and uh, we're excited. I hope you guys enjoyed that interview with Candy Shaw. You guys said get more and more interviews, and I want to keep doing them. I love it. I love sitting down. I said to Millennium next year, let's do those from the stage. Every, everyone. Let's do a big, That's let's make that main stage one day. You can interview me, man. Robert Crow means walks in, and I don't remember if he what he what which one he said, but he comes walking in, and he goes... You're like the Casey Kasem of, or it was either Casey Kasem of, or Larry King. And I, I think you said Larry King. Larry, you're like Some, the Larry King of hair. Somebody else goes, told you that you were like uh, Casey Kasem, though. Yeah. I forget who that was. Maybe it might have been Robert at just a different point. I don't know, but I was like, whatever. But it's just funny because <laughs> we, I want to do that. I think it would be really fun at, at hair shows to be able to do this kind of show. I mean, it's cool. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you learned a lot about the Bali Box and check it out online is there a website on this brian anywhere do you want to go to break again for another half second no okay. yeah right <laughs> all right so um we're gonna go into questions from social media and then we'll quickly spin the uh spin the wheel there what is what's the website it's www.sunlightsbalayage.com there you go I thought it was Sunlight something, but I wasn't sure. So sunlightsbalayage.com. Pick up your kit. $119. Hopefully there's a spot you can tell them that you heard about it from Splitting Hairs. Yeah. Just to let her know that we're giving her some love there. And uh, all right, let's do a couple questions from social media. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, I like the first one. How can we deal with metallic dye or box dye? Can we do highlights on them and change their color? Yeah, you can. It's going to be a lot slower moving. It's going to be very difficult. It's going to take a long time. I definitely recommend more and more companies are coming out with professional grade color removers mm -hmm. to try those. I suggest trying trying everything you can to get rid of those colors before you immediately jump into lighteners because, you know, obviously lightener, I like to use as my last resort just because it roughs up the hair a little bit more right. once you got mm -hmm. that metallic dye in there. The good, the thing that you really, you want to focus on breaking the base, which is another question that we have later, but break that base of, of the harsh metallic dyes and start slowly lifting them. Thad had a client, Susan, right? Yeah. Um, that he had been working on, for, he's been working on her for a year probably. She's almost blonde now. Yeah. She had level one hair. It took a year of consistent appointments, probably a frequency of visit of 12, I would say. Every month she's yeah, in here, she, right? 
at the very beginning, she was coming in like every three weeks. With, yeah. Uh, between uh, doing like the highlights as well as uh, doing conditioning treatments. Yeah. So she was constantly conditioning treatments, working. Her hair is so healthy and she's got coarse, like it could damage easy, but he's done it slow in the right way. He's got the frequency of visit. So that's a successful client and, uh, and you're not ruining their hair. So Which, there's no sense in what? That was actually the, the trouble when she first came in was before we even got started, she had damaged hair. So like right, right. Off, right off the bat, like we started off with conditioning treatment and then I, be, I believe we did the kitchen, conditioning treatment and then did a quick blow dry and okay. put the highlights in. Cool. So yeah, so that's, that's the way that you want to do it. You don't want to try to just go at it right away. Right. Um, da, da, da. I deal a lot with fashion colors at the salon. This is Shelly Hall. Says some colors hold longer than others, and some brands of colors are brighter than others. In your experience, what do you recommend to keep the pinks and the blues in the hair looking bright and fresh? Matt, what do you think? So I said that. Um, honestly, I think this is also a frequency of visit thing. This mm -hmm. is something you don't want. There is no pink or blue color that lasts a long time and stays bright in the hair. You got to keep overlaying it. So. Can, to break up your service, what you want to do is take um, the first initial service, have it a little bit more expensive. Let's say maybe if they just want a couple pieces of color, it's a certain charge for the lightening process, and then it's a charge for the overlay. Combine it together, call it something. Then go through and say that you're going to need to come back within two to three weeks and just get a quick 10-minute overlay that won't cost you barely anything right. because you're just overlaying it. You already have the lightener in there, so you're just refreshing it. Um, so come up with a name for that, package it together, keep that frequency of visit going and getting your uh, services per guest in there. And that's the way that you need to do it. There's no way to keep, I mean, they're, they're advancing this more and more. Right. I know that Joyco has come out with some crazy fun stuff and I'd like to try it. I haven't, but I know that all of them seem to last about the same amount of time. Even Paul Mitchell's uh, Inkworks, they redid the formula. They last a lot longer, but you still got to come in. I mean, it's not natural. It doesn't so, last forever. Right. Yeah, they're big, huge dye molecules that are sitting on top of the hair. They don't go in the hair, so there's no way that they're going to stick. Yeah, there's a right. price of being awesome, and it's a frequency visit of 16 to 24. <laughs> <laughs> well, All right. I also going on. That was of definitely at the experience this weekend. <laughs> okay. Um, a couple more. Do, all right. Uh, let's do what are some ways you advertise in your area to attract new clients? Wow, you got them all for me. Well, I mean, I, yeah. we can go around the horn if you yeah. want. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, for me, because like we're in such a small town, like I, I'll go places where I can scoop up the kinds of clients that I want. Like I've talked to you about that, just like I should go hang out at this restaurant's bar instead mm -hmm. of this one because it's going to be a completely different kind of clientele that we're going to pull in. Yeah, instead. I mean, here's the thing. You have the bar that you go get drunk and can be an idiot at. This is something I learned from one of my bosses in the past. You have that bar where you can go be fun, be yourself, and, and party it up, whatever. And then you have the bar that you go to maybe before you do that. <laughs> And, you know, hand out the cards. Maybe go, go somewhere where it's a little bit more um, of a classy kind of, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Just go in there and have a cocktail or something or even a water. I, I don't do that. Have a cocktail or something. <laughs> or like, you know, it, maybe you can't. But just, I don't want to offend anyone. But what I'm saying is go in there, maybe get an appetizer or something. Sit down, talk to the bartenders, get to know them or the waiters at that place. Cause then once you have that connection, you can go in there all the time and you know, you'll build up relationships with their clientele. But we, there's so many ideas. One of the, just to sort of piggyback off of that one, I had worked at a salon at one point that was- You just piggybacked off your own idea. Yeah. You gave the idea, I went with it, and then you piggybacked off yeah. of it. Right. So out of full Sweet. circle. Yeah, we're right back at full it. Full circle to perfection. Is that piggyback or is that leapfrogging? Jeez. <laughs> oh, I- um, <laughs> Distractions. So what I did, I was working at a salon. I had gone to a completely new area. I didn't know anybody. I didn't even know where I was. And so what I ended up doing was I had worked out a deal with the owner of my salon. This was only my promo. It was small, so it didn't really matter. But I went around to a couple of the busier local restaurants. 
like yeah. TGI Fridays, a couple of the bars around there and worked out deals. I told the manager and a couple of the servers that I was going to work out something there with the servers where, you know, come in, I'll discount your services, whatever, give you a stack of my cards. And every single time one of your tables tells you that they like your hair, then you point them my direction. Every time they bring me one of your cards, then I'll continue hooking you up. Nice. And that was one of the jobs I got fired shortly after. I wonder how well it worked out, but <laughs> it was a good idea anyway. It's one of the 90 jobs you got fired from. There was only three. Okay. I think Thousand. Three. I think three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. All right. I know that we hit on this last time. I don't know if you had said when do you determine when to bump your prices. I think we did. Yeah. Did we tackle yeah, that Yeah, we nailed week? that. Check out episode 37. We okay. talk about raising mm-hmm. prices. Uh, this one for everyone but Matt. Now that beach and pool summer months are upon us, do you guys have a go-to product to help preserve color during this time? Drea. Yes. I love... <laughs> Uh, well, first off, I love Shampoo 3 after... Um, Paul Mitchell. It, Paul, yeah, Paul Mitchell's Shampoo 3 because it just... It removes the chlorine from the hair, but it's a little bit gentler. It can be harsh, but it does actually get out the chlorine in a much gentler fashion than some of the other chlorine-removing shampoos as a swimmer. I know a lot about that one. Um, also, the Paul Mitchell has their Sun um, line that's very seasonal, Having that spray on hand before you go in the pool, damp, dampen your hair and spray that in there. It's they, a great. It came back out this year. Yeah. It did? Just not as like big and in your face. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen it. I mean, It came through I've, here. We had it. We did? Yeah, yeah, it's on the shelf. Not anymore. We sold it. No, there's one on the. Oh, on shelf. that shelf. Yeah. There's yeah. actually a bottle right next to you. All right, yeah. then. Well, <laughs> beca- well, what I love about it is everyone complains about it being too heavy and too oily. Yes, if you're just going to go and blow dry your hair with it, yeah, it will be. But if you put it in your hair before you go swimming or at the beach, that's what it's designed for. And that's where it kind of locks your hair in place, prevents things from being absorbed in there. It's a good friend. Yeah, another thing that um, the my old boss, Sam Burns, would always tell people is um, if you take Aupui Moisture Mist from Paul Mitchell and you put it in a cooler and you take that to your beach, so just keep it in the cooler and you can mist yourself with it. I'm pretty sure this said this question was for everyone but you. I know, but I had a great <laughs> answer. <laughs> Moisture mist is answer. always a nice yeah, one. I did? No, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm no, sorry. I heard Thad giving a good one today. That's what I always tell my guests, so I know it's a good one. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I always like to tell my clients uh, to make sure that their hair is wet with tap water, so like hopping in the shower before uh, they go out to the pool or to the beach, because it's going to absorb their uh, absorb into their hair, so that way the chlorine's not going to be able to absorb as much, or the salt won't be able to because hair is like okay. a sponge. sponge. You can only get a sponge so wet. Right. Did you ever, somebody always uh, told me that, somebody always told me. Uh, <laughs> constantly was telling Constantly was me. telling me that a damp towel dries better than a, than a dry towel. Like it, it will dry, like if you take a damp towel and dry yeah. yourself with it, it actually will dry you, it will soak up the water faster than if you just take a dry but towel. But that's like the exact opposite of what he yeah. just said. But there's well, also we're saying wet your hair with regular water. That way, when you go in the pool, you won't absorb as much pool water. And yeah, that's like the opposite. Yeah, but what I'm saying is like with, uh, um, with the conditioner and stuff. That's still, I don't understand. You're saying if your hair is wet, <laughs> it's going to soak up more chlorine? Matt, I, no. I, I, I've heard that before, too. And like it doesn't make sense because like if the towel's already wet or if the sponge is already wet, how can it be absorbing more like that much more yeah, water? Yeah, if the sponge is already wet, then... It's. I have no idea. And I have no idea why I said that. All right. We need Mr. Wizard next week. We need to Google that. Can we Google that real quick? Can we get on that? Does a towel really... I just want to know if the towel thing works, and then we'll figure out the hair thing later. That was like the whole... Awesome. The one that used to get me when I was a kid was that hot water freezes faster, and I'm like, but it's got to get cold first. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> but then like someone explained it to me that it does. Okay. Um, Can we follow up on that after splain hairs? Uh, I'd like to know about that. Google that too. All right. Yeah. Throw it out. Let's focus. All right. Focus. Uh, preferred method of retouching highlights or a multi dimensional color, William Everett III. Uh, it really depends on the look I think you're going for. Like if you're retouching highlights, <clears throat> I personally try to not put them exactly where they were before because, well, I mean, it, yeah, it depends on the look you're going for. If you're trying to get somebody to look like they're pulling off a natural blonde, 
then if you're doing weaves through their hair, then you go through and you weave the hair you didn't do last time. And that's going to make them even blonder than they were the last time because you did hair that wasn't done in 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. If you want to keep the highlights exactly where they are, then you just... If you did it before and you're consistent with your work, you should have no problem pulling out relatively the same highlights that you did last time. Yeah, I've never been able to do that in my life. Really? Really. I have wow. never been able to follow a highlight that I did before. Really? Really. Huh. Have you ever huh. been able to do that with a haircut? No. So maybe that's it. There you go. <laughs> but you... I just always felt like color, like if I'm, if I'm going to have somebody come in for highlights again, then I would just color them again. And then I would usually, if they started to get too blonde, then I would just throw in a few low lights from that point. I would well, never just, I would never sit there and try to pick it out. That's just my personal. I, well, that's what I'm saying. Like when you work, if you have a consistent method to how you do something, then you're going to bounce those. Exactly. those weaves close enough that you can either put them exactly where they were last time or just bounce out the other ones depending on what kind of look you want. I guess I've just never colored that way and you'll hear it in also in my interview with uh, Candy, but I, I my thought process is very similar to her. Like I, I'm not a foil person. I barely ever use foils because I like, whether it was called balayage or not, like I would just randomly, okay, I just want to brighten it just a little bit there. So I, it was always to enhance a haircut more than to pop in a bunch of blonde foils. Like I've never had, I, I watched you and I saw Drea's foil today and it's like such a, a structured like foils are just perfectly placed through the head and I get it. But for me, if you're going through and you can actually follow a pattern, it just doesn't seem like that would be that natural to me. Like, well, it's it following a pattern on based on the round of the head. Right. It's all about head shape and what look you're going for. So if you know that you're going for a slice or a weave and you know where you're putting it in the haircut, you can kind of figure out where you were last time. Okay. That makes sense. It's like a map. And we're, we're going to, this week we have to work on finding a time to start filming again because we've got to get back to the steps. Yeah, I know. And the next step is foiling. And that was one of the things that I wanted to hit on. Not necessarily patterns of foiling, but just methods of doing it to make it easier, neater, okay. cleaner. All right. Sweet. Uh, what, it, what really is breaking the base? Lisa Forrester would like to know. So real quick, I think this will be a good, good final one. Yeah, um, I think that's it anyway. Breaking the base, I, we talked about a little bit ago, but it's just for me, breaking the base is just popping up the base maybe a shade or so so that you can then go in to color it. Finding ways to bring that, that root color up just a little bit, whether it's, I mean, I've seen some companies that sell base breakers that you just do a little bit so that they can go every 12 weeks getting their foils instead of doing it every six weeks because it just, it just processes that root enough to lift it just enough so that it's not that same dark root. Okay. See, that's why I don't know those because I've never used a company that did that. But um, so that's where I, I've in the dialogue I've always used breaking the base was to take something darker and just kind of break it. Up. Yeah, just to bring it up, bring it up just but a little bit. Slightly. So same thing, yeah. but that's cool that they make that for highlighting. I didn't know that. I was gonna say, doesn't that still leave a line of demarcation though? Probably, but not as much of one. So a more blended. Yeah, yeah, because okay. it's not a drastic. You're not talking about going from like a four to an eight. It's like a four to a five and a half. Okay. So it's just a little a smudge. All right, cool. So, so that's it for the papers. That's it for the papers. Where are we at? Done deal. Trending are we, tresses. Are we, are we getting ready? Oh, we got a trending tresses. Yeah, I have some. Then we got a spin for our So we got heart. trending tresses, and then we're going to spin the free wheel. Yes. For our darling. On the free wheel this week, we'll actually, we'll talk about that. Let's do trending tresses first. All right. Okay. There's no sense to go all over the place. I mean, really, why... Why should we stop now? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dre All right. Day. So Jennifer Aniston has her extensions back in her hair. Speaking of balayage. And she has her back her balayage. So I guess the movie role is over. And she's gone back to real life. Um, so that was that. Yeah. People are okay. excited she about it. She looks like Jennifer Aniston again. Yeah. yeah. Then, so Matt was talking about it a little while ago. Kelly Osborne has shaved both sides of her head now and is sporting a fun little mohawk. She looks. Fantastic. This is one of those haircuts I where, love her. like, this is something that 
my friend Steven is going to the salon guy. He's going to do this haircut. I don't see a point in doing this haircut. He is absolutely going to do this haircut. But that's why I want to create a version of this. He's going to do it because he does everyone, ever, all of them. But I just think that it's cool. It's definitely cool. I wish it was a little more... The one I want to do has like a, a fringier feel to the sides. Like something that somebody could actually wear. You know what I mean? Tired guy? Hey, I, I'm not hiding <laughs> it anymore. I know. Just See, I also like it. how it's styled, though, because it's kind of... Oh, I do in. like it. I like it. I like the front. I like the... It's, it's got like a little dippity-do in the front. Yeah. A dippity-do? A dippity-do. That's a technical term. <laughs> what exactly is a dippity-do? It's a very technical term. Yeah. It's in the glossary <laughs> of the Milady book. Oh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait. So, her uh, sideburns are cool, too. I like how they're yeah, kind they of straight off the ear. It's interesting. Mm. You don't right. like that? No. Not oh. as much. It. Eh. I like it's different. You know? It's different. I like that it's something different. I did not notice her sideburns until you pointed them out, and now it's kind of killing me. Yeah. Does it bother you? It's like Leroy Jethro Gibbs on NCIS. And I didn't. <laughs> I didn't like. <laughs> I, I like. I like that the. Uh, I like the dark brown sides, right yeah. into the purple as well, yeah. and it's. It, there's some depth in it. It's a really good picture. I bet it doesn't look like that in real life, but. Is, is that two pictures? It is two pictures. I can't see the other one. The big oh, box yeah. is They're in Instagram way. together. I, yeah. I squished them together for you, Brian. Thank you. You're welcome. She looks great. Putting in the effort. Um, Jennifer Love Hewitt has chopped her hair off into a nice little bob. She is prego. That's why. She looks pregnant. She looks pregnant, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, well. <laughs> okay. But, so she's getting her hair chopped off ready for her motherhood. Olivia Pal- Palermo. <laughs> yes, I don't know why I can't say it. <laughs> um, I'm not the only one affected by nighttime shooting. <laughs> Dre can't read after seven. I can't Paul read. Paul and <laughs> um, <laughs> Olivia, what was it? Palermo. Palermo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay, anyways, keep going. What so, Olivia P. Name? They're on a first name basis. She doesn't need the last name. <laughs> yeah, so she is. Got Who? some balayage done before. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're moving on, Matt. We're refocusing. Okay. All right. <laughs> Has some balayage highlights going on for her uh, wedding, upcoming wedding. So that's fun. Um, Natalie Portman, uh, who's now the. Are you clapping? <laughs> she got through it. Oh, okay. I was oh, like, I, I, I thought, thought you really liked Natalie Portman. For Natalie Portman. Okay. So what is she doing? So she debuted her. Um, <laughs> Blonde her hair at uh, the Miss Dior show, I guess. She's the face of Dior now. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. Emma Roberts, yes, can still read now. Um, went finally went back to being a brunette after a year of being blonde. So, I think that's fun. I, I, I can't tell if that's just a bad picture because I don't dislike her blonde. Like on American Horror Story season three, she was a blonde and looked good. Yeah, I. I think but this in was that just picture, a very she, unflattering picture. Yeah, because in that side by side, she definitely looks so much better with the darker hair. She I looks think she more can like, definitely pull off being both. Oh, yeah. She looks more related to Julia with her hair dark. Yeah. Just needs a little bit more warmth to it instead of just the golden brown. Mm. Anyway. All right, and Kim K. I guess after the wedding, it meant going back to the blonde. Yeah, I think that was a picture that her hairdresser put up. I do like this blonde a lot better than the last one. It's yeah, I mean, it's definitely much more of, like, she's, she's blonde. She's committed. That's pretty serious. Don't show Christina this picture. I mean, she's, like, super blonde. Yeah. I know. See that. <laughs> All right. I won't. I don't right. even have that picture. All right. Oh, yeah, I didn't add that one to the feed yet. Brian came back from... Christina probably saw it. She's on the feed. It's not on the feed yet. It's not on the feed. I know, but, like, when you put it on the feed... Oh, okay. gotcha. That was a last minute squeaker. That was a squeaker. Yep. So that was it. That's trending trusses. All right. Awesome. Sweet. Sweet. All right. So this week. Thank you, Dre. You're welcome. Spinning for our darling Kimberly Benack. Benack? Kimberly Benack. Benock. Is How would you say it, Dre? Hold on. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so we have um, on the wheel, our sponsors are 
awesome. We love all of them. They're amazing. Uh, we have Millennium Systems International giving three months of Mevo, and you just wait until you see what Mevo can do. The gamification is so awesome. It showed like when you hit your service per guest goal or your average ticket goal, it pops up. You get an award sent to your cell phone. So it'll say like Brian, you you met your service goal of, for the for the month, and then there's a trash not trash talking, but you can comment <laughs> on like the gamification board so that when you start doing that, people can see it. Like you can post it in your break break room. You can have a screen. It'll just show that all the time. Dre is like so. No, not yet. <laughs> we have Amika is giving out a blow dryer. That's incredible. So talk about these huge prizes. Three months of Mevo. Amika's giving a blow dryer. Candy Shaw's given a Bali box, so if it lands on that, I got to get her logo up there. Uh, Pivot Point is giving away a DVD collection. Um, I think there's probably like three or four co colors on there. And then uh, Shop FSE, $100 off scissors, a Which is $25, huge. $25 gift card, and the rest of them, all the fist logos, are a t shirt. So let's go, and we're going to spin this. What's so funny? She could just do this in her own time. I know. Like she loves. She waits doing it. till the end of the week, and then. Oh, that was so close. So close. So Matt's favorite. Part I would love to give out a sponsor prize one of these weeks. Well, we did. I mean, I we had the one it. teacher that got the, the magnetic heads. I know, but she never wrote me. Oh, really? I know. So I don't know her. I don't know her info. So um, it's a shame. We might need to take off some of uh, like. Put I got to get more sponsors. sponsors yeah. Is what needs to happen. So, but so close to Millennium, but you get a T-shirt, and it's an awesome T-shirt. I mean, come on now. Yeah. So, we gave out like a couple T-shirts this weekend, and the girls were like posting it on Twitter, saying the coolest T-shirt they've ever owned and everything. So, they are awesome T-shirts. Make sure, uh, well, Kristen, right? Kimberly. 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 Email Matt at freesaloneducation.com and give me your T-shirt size and your address, and I will get that shipped out to you right away. Um. And good job, Kimberly. Good that job, Kimberly. right there, you asked? Yeah. How do you get that once in a lifetime chance? Exactly. Boom. Yeah, a lot of people want to know how to get further in this business. Drea is going to be throwing the free pong, right? Yes, I so am. So while I talk about all this, you want to get your head camera yes. on. So, and then you can <laughs> let us so know. Excited. You know who you're throwing for, right? Good job. Okay. So, um, so a lot of people want to know, how do I get further in this business? How do I do things? And when I was talking to Robert, and you'll hear it in the interview next week, I'm going to put Robert Cromings on. But, um, you know, I said a lot of people came to this event. I was uh, only supposed to work two hours. I didn't even bring a bathing suit because I knew the whole entire time I wanted to be focused on mingling with people, interacting, getting to know people. Uh, the one thing that I... I always heard Robert Cromie say, but I didn't really understand, was if you want to be successful, hang around successful people. And really what the, I thought that was is you had to move to California and work around Paul Mitchell people. But really what it means is every second that you're out there at a hair show or wherever, you need to connect with other people, people that are doing things that you want to do, and then you can you know, do those things. What this means to, for Kimberly is she put herself out there. It was step one. She wanted to do something. She's did. She did it. Drea, what? <laughs> I hope that was picked up on a camera. Well, Thad. The, the GoPro's on. Oh, my gosh. Awesome. So, Thad, yeah, can, can you grab... What, what she goes through. Which one do you want? Um, let's grab, I guess, that camera. Let's do that one. So, you, Michelle Bryson, right? Bryson? Bryson? Bryson, Bryson? See, that's the problem is we say it 17 awesome. different ways. I know. And then she's like, you said it right. I'm like, it was time. <laughs> I know. So... Drea is throwing Drea's the ball. In it. She's it's right it. behind. She's going outside. Drea has been waiting for this moment. So this is free, free pong. And what you get is if she makes one ball, you get a T-shirt. Two balls, you get a fan pack. Three, you get fifty dollars on shopfsc.com. And Michelle, yeah, Michelle did say happy birthday to Drea, so she got this opportunity. So ball one, she makes it. She's in. She's so serious. Okay, one ball's in. T-shirt for Michelle. T-shirt it is. All right. So Get we it. have now decided that so far, you guys are all equals. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like you're going next week. I know. I'm actually going to be practicing all week. I'll be taking the beer pong table home with me to make sure. And just like her brother, she's still going. Yeah. They, <laughs> the Bullens can't stop playing beer pong. They love it. Once they get going, but one ball in.
T-shirt, Michelle, it's coming to you. Yes. Anything else? Uh, there was something, but I don't remember what. I want to do some research on that dryer that I sent you the picture of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, 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 Brian sent me a picture. Still going. Trey is all over the place. Still going. Yeah, there they go. The, once beer pong comes into their life, they quit working. It's like Thad, Thad will just stand over there the whole time. I'll be like, all right, you want to help out? I'm doing anything else. <laughs> so we, um, what was I saying? Uh, uh, the picture the record, I sent you of the dryer. So Brian sent me a picture of this Conair dryer, but it was not from Conair. And I, and I tried to research, and I didn't see anything from Conair saying they had a blow dryer coming in September. So we should look into that because it was a kind of a cool looking. Brushless. It was yeah. see-through. I saw two see-through dryers on Instagram this weekend. You did? Another one was a company I'd never heard of. I, was, I made a mental note to do some research. Yeah, let's look them up as well. Cool. So hopefully we'll keep getting tools. If you guys have a company and you have tools that you want to send out, we'd love to review them on here. But make sure that you follow us on harebrain.me. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Pretty much all at Free Salon Education. Twitter is at Salon Education. And subscribe to us on YouTube, Instagram. Hairstyle. H A I R E. Style. Fad Bolonized. Dry Day 2289. <laughs> all right. Oh, my camera didn't go back. <laughs> Drea took off the head camera. I know, but oh, did you see Thad just go to pose for it and realize it wasn't there? <laughs> he went, no. oh. Hey, you guys are posing the entire time. <laughs> yeah. I'm just but always we, cheesing it. Right. Oh. All right, guys. So make sure that you support Candy Shaw. She's doing something awesome. Go on, buy a Bali box. It's $119. Get it on sunlightsbaliage.com. And um, yeah, so that's it, right? That's 38. Let's get out of here. That's 38 in the bag. We're almost to 40. That's cool. Make sure you follow our sponsors, Millennium Systems International, Demand Force, Mizutani Scissors on ShopFSE.com, Standish Salon Goods, love the chairs, and Amika and Freestyle Systems, awesome hanging blow dryers. And I also did an interview with Blair from uh, Freestyle. We were at the booth. Martino came in. We had a microphone. We were going over the whole entire booth, everything about the blow dryers. So that'll be coming out on YouTube soon as well. Awesome. All right, guys, we will see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned. Barrett's tip is coming up next. Probably something awesome. She comes up with creative stuff every week. I'm impressed. And her mannequin's going to look especially good this week. Why? Because I took it to a balayage class that I just taught. So now she's, she's fantastic beautiful. highlights. All right, cool. All right, guys, we will see you on the next video. Thank you. Hey, guys, this is Barrett Silatana from FreeSalonEducation.com with Splitting Hairs and your tip of the week on Splitting Hairs. Today we're just going to do a really quick, easy chignon, kind of inspired by last week's tip of the week of pulling the ponytail through the middle of the hair. So here we go. Okay, so same thing as last week. We're just going to separate the inside of it, take the tail of our ponytail and loop it through, giving us a nice, easy section. If we need to brush out that ponytail, we can at the bottom. Then what I'm going to do is add a little spray to the inside of what the chignon is going to be. And we're just going to go through and we're going to roll this up. I'm going to tuck the tail in right now, first by pinning it, and then I'm going to tuck the rest of it in with my tail comb. One on each side just for right now. And then I'm going to take my tail comb, pushing everything under. And then taking a few more bobby pins just to secure the chignon in there. If I can open the bobby pins. Two, maybe more, two more on the top. You can also use hair pins on the top as well. If you feel like there's enough hair to grip it and a little bit thick. Thicker hair than thinner hair, you can always use the hairpins. Taking one more on the side. Before I go in with my final bobby pin, I just want to spray. Get any of those loose ends tucked in. And I'm going to take one more bobby pin and just tuck these loose ends in. And bobby pin it down. And there you have our quick, easy chignon inspired by last week's tip of the week, pulling it through like a topsy-turvy ponytail. Something very quick and easy you can really do on anyone. 
Thank you for this week's tip of the week and stay tuned for next week. Thanks, guys. I just broke up with you and now I'm sure I'll be the bad guy too although as we both know that isn't true. up there so I did my yeah mm. yeah I didn't feel like putting it back yeah Dre was slacking hashtag Dre good job one ball hashtag slacker you know what's good you didn't get zero balls yeah if you would have got zero you would have been depressed right <laughs>